Welcome to the App Advisory Show, your fortnightly dose of all things cloud accounting, apps, and app advisory. Hello, all. So, welcome to the next session of the App Advisory Show. Um, great to have Andy Muir, who's part of the ecosystem partnership at Zero. So, it's good morning, isn't it, for us here, Andy? Just mate, yeah. Just making it, yeah. We're just sneaking in. Uh, so, thanks a lot for um, coming along today. So, we're, we're going to have a chat. A, bit around the evolution and the future of the of the app ecosystem a uh, bit of a chin wag um, quite informal lease sessions um, but really just to with a lot of accountants and bookkeepers who listen to this so I think it's really interesting as, a, as an app integrator and someone who's involved in the apps quite a lot and then also with the accountants I, I think it's quite interesting what you guys do in and around the app ecosystem and I think it'd be really good to educate them a little bit more about what that world is that maybe they don't see they'll see all the apps and and all these cool webinars and you know the zero cons and the road shows etc but it would be good if uh, they could understand what goes in on in and around the ecosystem as well because i think that's quite hidden which is a good thing but it's good to, also good to know there's a little bit going around that but before we dive into that um a little bit andy about how you've ended up at zero we've known each other a couple of years but i know obviously everyone's got a life before um cloud accounting etc so just a bit about about you and how you've ended up where you're at yeah, of course. Uh, thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. So, um, so I've um, my background really is in um, a mix of marketing, kind of sales and partnerships, and um, had a, a bunch of roles that I was doing in that in that realm before I joined Zero. I suppose just before I moved to Zero, I actually spent three and a half years in the accounting space, but working for the Institute of Chartered Accountants in their partnership okay. team. So, um, trying to find for uh, the ICAW's members, which were members in practice, or you know. Um, finance professionals in business, the kinds of products and services that would help them improve their you know, business and personal lives and you know, going out and finding some of those partnerships, negotiating kind of deals with those partnerships, uh, marketing those products and services to the members through the marketing channels at the ICAW. Um, and, and so, you know, when I was there, it, it was uh, not a technology or SaaS business, albeit I was working with technology and SaaS providers. And uh, I was, you know, very aware of the likes of kind of QuickBooks and uh, and Sage and Zero. Uh, always interested in what those providers were doing and seeing how they were making an impact on, you know, certainly some of the members in practice that I was engaging and talking to with regularly. And um, about three years ago, um, an opportunity came up at Zero to work in the ecosystem and the partnerships team, which I thought was incredibly interesting. And you know, certainly slightly chalk and cheese in the sense that I was working for a membership company before and 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 um uh, and transitioned into a into a SaaS business but a lot of the partnership type principles still remain remain quite true and so um so yeah like i've last three years been um been with uh, zero really looking at the ecosystem partnerships and the ecosystem strategy for the uk and EMEA. and so what that really means is uh, it's kind of two two sides to it one is on the developer side, so the app partner side, how we manage the more strategic, larger partnerships, how we work with apps to help, um, you know, make Zero um, available to businesses that maybe by ourselves as a bookkeeping and uh, accounting tool, uh, it may not have been quite so interesting. So how can we open up new markets with some of those app partners? But of course, uh, everyone knows we've got lots of app partners in our ecosystem. So it's you know, how do we sometimes work with those smaller developers, and how do we, you know, we want to continue to attract the best in class innovation to our API. So how do we you know, uh, deliver some of those programs of engagement, showcase our API, showcase the value of working with Xero and, and helping our mutual uh, customers as accountants and, and small businesses. And then I suppose um, you know, what uh, maybe some of the people that are listening in today will see is the kind of customer side of things. So you know, how do we articulate the value of the ecosystem? How do we, you know, how do we develop you know, great events like ZeroCon and you know, make sure that um, our app partners are present how do we um, improve the quality of the integrations? Um, how do we develop programs like the App Integrator program app that you that yeah. you have a part of, just to make apps more accessible? Because we know there's so many great things that happen when businesses and accountants are using apps. So it's really you know, driving the innovation on one side um, on, and managing those relationships with developers and apps, but also you know how do we um, help businesses and accountants connect to the, the app tools that can help them run and grow their businesses, um, which is probably the side that some of the listeners may know more about. Um, if they if they've met or spoken to me before, yeah, okay, cool. So, interestingly as well, I mean, people might not know that there's, there's a global team that you're part of, isn't there? Um, so it's not just Andy, you know, sat in London, Zero HQ. It's uh, 
there's a group of you. So that's interesting. If you just explain a little bit more. I didn't actually know how big the team was probably until I came to a session with you guys last year. Yeah, it's a sizable team. Um, so our ecosystem team, I suppose, are um, headquartered out of New Zealand, um, uh, headed up by a guy called Nick Holdsworth. But I think what's, what's uh, and you know, they're, they're responsible really for the developer platform. So it's, you know, how, um, how do we, how do we continue to improve and iterate the infrastructure that developers use to build applications uh, on Zero's API? How do we build the, you know, the products and the services, so I suppose the products and the features in our developer platform that, that mean that customers find it easier to connect to tools? And we're seeing some really cool innovations in that space, which, which I might come on to a bit later uh, at Zero. Um, but um, you know, really importantly, I think, you know, apps and technology can sometimes be a, a a little esoteric I and mean, we've got we've got um you know we've got teams that look after what we refer to internally as the practice and business applications but we also you know we have you know banking partnerships we have um payment providers we've got you know lenders as well and so there's a lot of cross-functional work that happens to make sure that we're delivering a consistent um engagement service between those fintechs and those apps and zero um on the relationship and the developer side um, and then there are, you know, counterparts that do the same role that I do that are probably slightly more customer facing, um, but also, you know, do the partnership management for the apps, just not just in the UK and America, but in New Zealand, Australia, um, the US. Um, so we manage, you know, we manage the, the, um, the relationship side of things um, with the app partners at kind of a global level and we're well coordinated in the way that we do that. So, uh, so yeah, so, you know, we're a real cross-functional team um, and, you uh, that often quite I mean that often quite often means you know some early calls some late calls but um we <laughs> and we 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 we're uh, you know we're continually trying to evolve the way that we do work with those providers. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we've got a team globally and interesting. I, I mean, I've, I've I've met Nick a few times, Nick Holdsworth, and his history was with Vend, wasn't it? He, yeah. He was quite a part of that sort of build. So those who don't, don't know who are listening, uh, Vend is a uh, a, a EPOS system, a, a TIL system, which has has, has been well evolved over the last decade or so so he came from that world and and came into zero so yeah that's quite an interesting move i think um now in terms of like i was looking back at some old content from when we got involved with the ecosystem as blue hub um probably i think it's six years five six years ago now and i think in our content we were banding around like a couple of hundred apps in around the the ecosystem for, for zero um and i bet people are probably thinking oh, i wish it was just 200 uh, who are listening to this because that even 200 felt a lot back then um, yeah. but I, I imagine I think it's 800 the official line last it's probably up in the 900 and there's obviously unofficial ecosystem partners who do their own integrations and things but um, how do you in your two three years involved in this area how have you seen the evolution of the uh, of the ecosystem what's been, what's been any sort of key key milestones or key areas that you thought have really sort of like progressed quite well yeah, so I think um, I mean I always um, I always kind of uh, like reshare this knowledge, I suppose. Um, and some of the some of the guys that are tuning in may may have met Rodgery um, yeah, yeah. back in the day. But of course, um, no zero when it first uh, when it was first founded was kind of revolutionary, right? It was cl- cloud accounting, which was you know quite a hard sell at that time <laughs> um, to lots of accountants and small businesses. And so. Uh, but even at that time, Rod was really keen to make sure that we opened up an API, which was almost unheard of. Um, and so, you know, early on in like 2011, I think we made our API available. But just like setting zero at that time, it was, it was, um, you know, hard. No one would take our calls. Like no one would quite understand like why they might want to, you know, write to two zeros API and have some kind of integration. Yeah. Um, and we began to get a few on board, began to get a few more customers um, uh, and uh, everyone began to see the benefits of the, and the network effects of that kind of approach. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, fast forward today, 800 apps. And, uh, you know, frankly, we'll, you know, we continue to want to grow that. Um, you know, if we just stopped, we would stop enabling, you know, some of the best in class, you know, apps and innovation uh, from being available in our marketplace and being available to our customers. And so we're going to continue to want to build out, um, you know, the providers that we work with and, and um, improve the way in which we work with them. So there's just great customer experiences for our advisors and small businesses. But um, uh, I think what we're, you know, whilst we're really keen on providing that choice, what we're really keen to do is make sure that we are probably getting a little more personalized in the way in which we surface up some of those 
those app recommendations you know the the most consistent feedback that we get via our sales teams customer facing teams is you know we need, really need help with some apps and we want to work out how to use them uh, or there are you know quite frequently i hear there's there's you know there's too many now um it's hard to spend the time identifying which ones are going to be most appropriate for us to use and so you know we're working really really hard on um as we do continue to grow out our marketplace how uh, kind of from a product perspective so inside zero we can begin to be more personalized in the way in which based on what we know about those users you know we can recommend the right begin to recommend the right app solutions um but also you know there's a huge educational um piece too that you know we want to uh, we want to continue to iterate on so you know how are we you know uh you know building out you know marketing app playbooks for example which begin to feature some of our top apps in in, in certain industry categories that you know you know that they're at a certain level in terms of connections you know they've got a decent number of reviews and some advocacy already how do we compare and contrast those apps so that they're uh, more easily findable uh, again programs like the app integrator program um, for those app implementation projects that are perhaps a little more complex than an advisor might feel comfortable doing themselves are, are ways that we can try and make you know apps a little more accessible but i think uh, whilst we will continue to do lots of education and marketing around um, demystifying apps, I think what you can what you'll begin to see more from zero over the next couple of years is uh, you know, far improved ways of um, being personalised in the way that we that we you know surface and uh, and we recommend at a product level some of those third party applications. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because I, I, overall I, I, some of this as well. It's not just the I think uh, the accountancy and the bookkeeping profession sometimes needs think they need to be absolute about everything before we can talk to clients and I'm aware and I've certainly seen this certainly over this pandemic period a, a slightly more informed SME prospect or client mm. turned up so they might know about transfer wise or they're certainly starting to know about fintech banks and I, I did a little video uh, last week about how now on Starling are you Starling there's other good um, uh, fintech banks around um, but using that, how now they've got a little mini ecosystem when you're on their app and lo and behold, there's some cloud accounting options with zero being there. So people are starting to be made aware of this world, whether we as an accountancy profession go and tell those SMEs, there's other, there's also the SME facing marketing, which is going on and that awareness starts to grow. So I think we'll start to find an, um, a partially aware SME, which can be dangerous as well as good. Um, but I find with when we're talking to a lot of the firms around the apps, they go, I just want an app for my client. And there's not actually enough information to make a recommendation sometimes. And it's like having that process to go and ask a few more questions to make sure we're making a good recommendation. But I think certainly historically it's been, well, here's a bunch of apps. Let's just chuck some apps at the client and see what happens. And that hasn't really, really helped. But some of that is due to an, um, an uned uneducated client. And sometimes it can be that I think we're starting to see a little more understanding from clients with things like payments, you know, Stripe and go cardless. Yeah. They're in other realms, not just accounting, you know, people want to get paid. So they yeah. are linking up with the e-commerce and, and the online payment providers. They're all starting to link up. So I think we'll start to see a more educated client base start to come along and, and maybe that's going to be accelerated by the recent pandemic. Um, yeah, I agree. We, we, um, yeah, we're, we're seeing even in some of the behavioral um, changes in our products, you know, and actually just anecdotally in conversations with with part, zero partners that i've had you know their clients are just taking a more the, like the psyche's changed somewhat yes. so just, they, they're just forced to take more of an interest in things that were pretty boring to them before like their financial position for obvious reasons and and so whether it's you know being more um, proactive in you know something simple like reconciling their bank feed in zero so they get a better real-time view of their finances or whether it's you know an awareness of um you know you know the e-commerce solutions or the payment services that are available to help them get paid more quickly uh, and in different ways. Um, we're definitely hearing through our partner channel that, you know, clients are asking more questions. Um, I think if you, if you also kind of layer on top of that, you know, there are, you know, the, the demographic of the kinds of businesses that are starting up at the moment and we're hearing, you know, quite openly in, in, in some of the news and some of the small business kind of channels that um, there are actually lots of businesses starting at the moment and they're probably going to be, um, you know, digital digital savvy uh, type people. Uh, they're probably going to expect to use technology to be more efficient, and they're just going to want slightly different things to perhaps businesses businesses that have you know maybe been clients of advisors for you know, 10, 15 years. And it's um so yes, like I I I 
I absolutely agree. I think um, being able to understand a little more about how some of those core applications that might work alongside Zero can help startups and small businesses and improve existing clients that an advisor might have is going to be really important. Uh, certainly not just for the last couple of months, but I think moving, you know, moving forwards, it's going to become a lot more normal to be talking about cloud technology. Yeah, I, I, just on even on that that new business startup, um, that journey right now. So let's say we start a new business tomorrow. First thing is right, I need sort of business bank out. I can yeah. ring up one of the big banks and wait six, eight weeks, maybe have to fill some paper in, or I can go down the fintech route and we're seeing Tide and Starling yeah. and those all on the TV now. Um, I can pick that up. I can probably have a bank within 24 hours. And then lo and behold, I can link up some payments. I can link up some of the cloud accounting. So that's a massive change in terms of what we were probably doing, you know, five years ago. Um, so that's the ease of use. And I think that sets the tempo and the mindset for the business owner. Well, I've just had all this so quickly. Why wouldn't I start to have other things so quickly that that, that is achievable? So yeah. I think it's going to be mega interesting how people, um, you know, come out of this. And I think those new business startups right now, and this isn't all about like the, you know, the 18 the year old who's a gamer, you know, there's some pretty savvy 20 pluses, 30 pluses, 40 pluses, 50 pluses. Um, and it's just going to be the mindset. And if they get, do get hold of that type of journey from the off, I think it will set the mindset. Well, actually, I want to work in this way going forward, which is where the ecosystem comes into its own, in all honesty. Yeah, totally. And, um, you know, there's been some really interesting, I'm, I'm going to forget the actual the data points here, but, um, you know, anything that you hear from, you know, PayPal, Stripe, Shopify, for example, in terms of the volume of customer or merchant growth that they're seeing, um, you know, just only suggests that whether there are businesses that were perhaps, you know, operating offline and just need an online presence or whether there are businesses that are starting up and starting up online, like those online businesses who are selling on Shopify, for example, aren't going to be looking, you know, they're going to be looking for a suite of, you know, applications that work in and around Shopify. Um, and so, you know, even, even reflected in, you know, what we're seeing in our, um, you know, the popularity of certain apps in our ecosystem, you know, there's a mini kind of e-commerce ecosystem at zero. And you can think like, you know, Stride, A2X, um, you know, we have lots of good engagement with Shopify, although, um, recognize there's some work to do on, on, on the integration <laughs> side of things there, but, um, but, uh, you know, all of those, all of those, that kind of mini ecosystem around that e-commerce space, uh, there's been a huge uptick in engagement and, and connections and API usage. So, um, you know, clearly there's, you know, that, that, that's a key indicator for us. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. It's going to be quite interesting over the next, uh, next few months and years around the e-commerce space. Yeah. And just finishing up on the evolution of the ecosystem to where we're currently at. Um, I think it's been interesting that I think when you look back at the 250 sort of two, 2015, that sort of time, I think there was a lot of the same, you know, and I think what's happened now, we've got a much more diversity of the type of apps that are integrated with zero now, you know, back then it was, there was a lot of expenses and there was a lot of uh, invoice automation. And I think we've really come out to a lot more sector areas now that are covered and it might be you've only got a couple of clients in your client base which need that particular app and it'd be worth engaging with the app to work out how you work with them and there'll be others which you know a lot of your clients will need so i think we also have to view the ecosystem in a bit different granularity than maybe it's just you know it's just 800 900 apps there's they've all got their part to play and it might be that you know 600 are never going to be part of your client base but 200 150 may touch some of your clients at one point in their lifetime and the others may well you know there could be 10 15 20 um that you use more regularly with 50 percent of your client base over the next three four five years so i think we need to look at the ecosystem slightly differently than just a bunch of apps uh, which i think is what it sort of inherently is is viewed as so um okay so we've talked spoke a little bit about there about you know where we've got to and and, and the breakdown and you've mentioned a couple of things around you know the stripes and this this e-commerce what are you thinking around the future um, of the ecosystem? I mean, I, I imagine you're getting uh, going into the real detail and giving all the commercial secrets away. I imagine you are, you, you know, you're watching the data and, 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 the, and the hints and tips and guidance that will be there. And, you, and have you seen a lot more in sort of the online selling sort of market start to appear? And is, is that where yeah. you think that we're going to see more sort of innovation in new supporting apps in and around that area? Yeah, like I am. Um... I don't, well, I think I can probably talk to the kind of some of the trends that we're seeing um, in terms of interest in certain you know app categories, um, and maybe just like the principles behind 
you know, zeros, you know, what, what we, what we want to do more of, um, yeah. not entirely sure, you know, where there'll be a boom in FinTech or, 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 or applications. I'm going to get my shares ready, my share investments <laughs> ready. And because... yeah. yeah. Look, we, as I mentioned, I think, um, you know, we're, uh, we definitely, that, that, that kind of e-commerce space is, is, um, an online sellers or omni channel is just going to be something that's not going to go away. Consumer behaviors have, have, have changed. Um, business behavior is just having to change. Um, whether it's again, being more proactive in financial management, but actually, you know, how do you, how do you reach your customers? And, and a lot of that increasingly is going to have to be online. So you know, I think e-commerce is definitely something that, um, when I've been speaking to some zero partners, they've been really thinking about as a service line. Like to your point a second ago, you, you were asking, you, you were kind of making the point that, um, you know, it, there may be lots of different types of applications that clients might use that advisors may need to get comfortable with. But I think to a certain extent, in the same way that businesses have had this, you know, this uh, situation that's had to really make them rethink how they operate and actually, you know, how, what, what kind of business they want to be. Uh, in the future, um, I do think there's a, re a really good opportunity for accountants to, you know, think quite strategically around, um, you know, what 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 do we want to do? Like, what's our service line? What's our service proposition? Do we want to do we want to? You know, it might be tough to think about, you know, uh, getting to grips with a bunch, you know, hundreds of different apps. But actually, if we're recognising there are certain trends in the market, if we're recognising there are certain requirements from some of our core clients that are you know, great from a cost to serve perspective, from a revenue profit kind of uh, perspective, actually should we be carving out, you know, um, different service propositions? Um, so I, you know, that, that, that's a slight side point, but I think that's quite an interesting concept that I've, yeah. I've heard also from a handful of zero partners they're really thinking about right now. Like what, does their, what, what is their firm of the future really going to be? Yeah. Um, I think they think it's going to change. Um, uh, you know, other obvious trends that we're seeing are you know huge upticks in um apps that are focused around that kind of cash flow uh, yeah, that cash flow space so um data automation tools you know hubdoc receipt bank you know auto entry those guys uh, obviously the cash flow forecasting tools and what we're seeing is um a lot of firms that are using you know some of the shorter term forecasting tools for, for just like ongoing monitoring and best practice and actually clients are beginning to want that service because they want that weekly or bi-weekly or monthly check-in on you know, you know how they're performing so like that 12 week view that sort of three month view yeah 100 yeah 100 and there's some great apps uh, in our ecosystem that support that uh, many of firms on this call know you know uh, float fluidly those kinds of guys yeah. but actually how those apps also work with the longer term products like futurely and spotlight too right like they, they, they're quite different from a proposition perspective yeah. we're seeing that yeah, just generally those um, reporting and forecasting tools are seeing a lot of usage same with the, the payments, uh, payments partners, invoice chase, like any of those apps around that kind of how can a firm deliver um, some robust kind of cash flow planning service um, have been widely used. Uh, I must confess, like that was going to always be quite obvious in the first kind of two or three months of, yeah, agree. of COVID. But I think what I really dearly hope doesn't happen is that the usage of those tools, um, you know, drops because I just think you know that should be like the bread and butter kind of service line for lots of firms that are using cloud tools. And we know that from a lot of our research, I think we conduct some research with around a thousand firms towards the end of uh, towards the beginning of last year. The most lucrative, lowest cost to serve service line out of you know a thousand of those firms was that kind of we refer to it as simple advisory, but really it's that budgeting, business planning, cash flow forecasting kind of yeah kind of service. So um. So like, yeah, I mean, they're certainly the things that we're seeing and, I, and trends that I, I'm on an e-commerce side, I just think will continue because the market's changed. But I'd like to think on the cash flow side of things uh, as a service, I'd like to think that will continue with the frequency and the rigor that we've seen in the last few months. Um, I think from a, you know, from a zero perspective, we're, um, you know, we're, we're so focused on extending zero beyond just accounting and bookkeeping. And we're always going to improve our you know our api and our developer platform um to make sure that our developers can offer the best experiences for partners and for businesses when they're working with zero but i think increasingly what you'll see is zero identifying you know really core product workflows and feature workflows that advisors and businesses use and um uh and you know partner more deeply with certain third parties and so you know we've really begun to see a little bit of that in invoicing workflows um linked to invoicing of course we you know, we, we acquired Waddle, um, which has been announced. Um, 
but I think you'll begin to see, you know, some, you know, slightly deeper partnerships in, in certain categories, but, you know, fundamentally we want to continue to provide choice, you know, we, we're going to want to make sure we've got a, a thriving ecosystem that can, you know, meet the needs of, of, um, of any customer really. Um, so yeah, so like, I, I hopefully that, yeah, I hope that kind of answers your question, but, um, did you? it did, it did. I, I think as well, it's, um, I think the importance of the ecosystem for me is, is that we don't get into a monopoly situation either. Yeah. Where, you know, you just, just concentrate on one. We do need competition to Basically. improve the quality of products. So, you know, although it would be easier just to have one in each area and go with it, the quality would soon disappear because there's nothing to keep you on your toes to keep moving forward. And we've seen that obviously in sort of desktop land previously where it's sort of been one incumbent and no real move and lack of inter innovation in there. So, you know, although 800, 1,000, whatever it's going to be, longer term seems a lot, it does improve the quality once you've found the app partners that you, you, you're comfortable working with. One, that you enjoy the partnership. Two, you enjoy the product. And three, you think you've got some sort of compatibility with that and your clients for that product. Just like couldn't agree more with that. And, um, you know, the like it is true, the cream kind of rises to the top to a certain extent. You know, you've got some of our biggest app partners from a, a usage perspective have only really been around for, you know, short periods of time. And so yeah. you know, we quite quickly are able to realize both from a um, usage perspective, the quality of the reviews, the advocacy that we hear from advisors, from our sales teams, partner can, like it's quite, you can quite quickly realize who some of those really great applications are. Um, and we, that's to my, uh, one of my original points at the, at the start of the session is we're going to want to continue to drive the best in class innovation through our API because it increases choice to your point, it increases competition, um, elevates everyone's game. So, um, so yeah, couldn't agree more. Cool. Right. And, and just one, just one, finish up on the, um, on the ecosystem part. I, yeah. I, I imagine people think that, you know, these apps just sort of appear certainly early days. They just sort of appeared on the, on, on the list in, in the marketplace and you went and got them. There is actually some rigor around becoming uh, a, a partner, um, an app partner, etc. So I just want to explain high level sort of what people have to go to, because I think it's, it's good for people to know that there is an element of rigor and governance put to uh, to this process yeah absolutely and there is like you'd like to think there would be right um <laughs> but um i i think I'll, I'll give the context in it in a moment but i think the important thing in terms of how this might be relatable to anyone that's listening's uh, experience in working with zero is we often get asked the question does this app work with zero we can't find it on the marketplace and um i mean the short answer is if if an app isn't on zero's marketplace that means they have not gone through the due diligence process that we would expect an app to go through where we feel uh, therefore confident that we're able to, you know, help them create a marketplace listing and, and make them live. And so, yeah, there's, you know, for, you know, we've got yeah, tens of thousands of active developers um, looking at our API all the time. Um, only got hundred, any, only got, you know, 800 plus apps. So we, we make sure we funnel them through a pretty rigorous onboarding process. So we've got a, team um, as part of the wider e global ecosystem team um, called the developer evangelist team which is about as SaaS and technology as you can uh, as you can get but um that two of them in the uk uh, awesome awesome people and they basically work with that partners through a 10-step process to enable them to get up and running um, with an integration at that point we, we kind of cap the number of connections that they can use so we want to get them trying the api with a few customers but we don't want to uh, let them kind of um, okay. open out to the world without yeah, yeah. you know completing the integration and certification process and then you know that developer evangelist team work with the app partner to um you know work with some of the beta customers get the feedback make sure there are certain checkpoints and you know, within the checklist that are that are met there's about 10 10 or 11 steps to that process and then the final step of that is you know getting them up and running with a marketplace listing so um look there are there are lots of apps that say they have an integration to zero um, my first port of call, if I'm, if I'm, an, if I was an advisor or, or, or a business, would be check the marketplace because if they're not, it means they haven't, you know, fully completed that certification process. Okay, okay. So that's a, a high level view for those who didn't know that there's a there's a governance and a rigor around becoming a, a certified app partner. And I think it's interesting because we've seen like the emergence of lots of ecosystems now, right? We're seeing like if you go to Shopify, they've got a huge ecosystem. The payments like the stri stripes and, and the go card are there starting to like create these mini uh, ecosystems so some overlap some don't uh, some are part of certain ecosystems but not others um so it's probably going to get a little bit more complicated um with, with like, don't everyone sort of wishing this away but um i think there'll be a lot more 
uh, ecosystems start to appear um, you know, from, the, from these apps that are, that are growing certainly over this period of time. Um, so it must be pretty hard. You, do you keep an eye on, on other ecosystems to see what they're you know, doing in terms of some of your partners? Yeah, uh, so I mean, we, we always, um, we, we've got really good relationships with Shopify, you know, Apple, um, lots of other, you know, platform type sales for lots of other platform type businesses. And so, you know, we always try and learn from each other, um, you know, best practice and, um, you know, things that we think are good in the way that some of those other businesses, you know, operate their ecosystems and how we can begin to apply that to, to the way in which zero works. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that, that they, those would be like governing principles, I suppose, and, and ways we build out our developer platform. But yeah, I, I agree with you. We're also seeing, you know, many, many kind of ecosystems, you know, around perhaps data automation and bookkeeping. Yeah. They're kind of cropping up and there'll, there'll be some around e-commerce and, you know, for example, A2X, you know, reconcile, uh, originally reckon, A2X was Amazon to zero, right? Yeah. Um, and they were only reconciling um, Amazon spend or Amazon tra Amazon transactions into zero. Um, but of course they now work with Shopify uh, as well. And it, yeah, there are pockets of it happening everywhere, but actually if I think, you know, if, if you're able to identify the pockets of where those applications work together as well as, as well as with zero, I mean, that is just incredibly um, beneficial and can, you know, make a business so much more efficient. So um, conscious that time and, you know, finding out who's doing what, but um, if you can unpick some of those little, little gems, I'm sure that's going to be uh, really useful. Great. Well, in all interesting world, we talk ecosystems all day. Yeah. Um, so we'll finish up on the ecosystem. Final question to you is what's your favorite bit of tech within accounting or your use personally, whether it's Siri uh, for your boiled egg time or whatever it is, what's a bit of tech that you quite enjoy and probably wouldn't go without? Do you know, what, it's, it's incredibly boring, but it is my, it's my Apple watch. Um, really? That I, uh, I, I've probably like everyone else, begun to do with my lack of commute you know i don't have the commuting time anymore so i tend to i'm doing a bit more exercise um even a little bit of open water swimming and i just find it like fun and cool that you can wear a watch and you can swim um not very far in my in my case but, uh, <laughs> have you got your five that, meter badge yet or <laughs> yeah i've got the stiff, got the certificate last week matt um but uh, yeah like it, you know whether it's running whether it's doing you know just hit class I, I just think it's just incredible that it can uh it can track the kinds of activity that you're doing and give you some reasonable form of um, uh, reporting on the kind of like calories you burn and how, how quicker or fitter you're getting. So reasonably boring answer. I'm sure everyone's got one, but um, you know, I've only really, you know, realized the benefits of uh, truly during lockdown, which is kind of sad. That's cool. That's great. Right, Andy, we'll finish it up there. That's been really insightful. Thanks a lot for being so generous with your uh, insights your information your experience um and i'm sure a lot of people have listened to this and will have enjoyed uh what you've got to say if people want to sort of hook up with you or you know try and link it link up with you what's the best way of, of contacting you yeah so probably uh you know uh, linkedin i think twitter handles like andy muir 15 um feel free to drop me any messages or follow me um if you want to find out a bit more about also my norwich city and engulfing woes but um i wasn't going to mention uh norwich to be honest because like, i normally do give you a bit of grief i thought it was unfair but um you know big season starting up for you so i'm sure you'll bounce back anyway thanks for having me matt really <laughs> <laughs> right cheers andy uh great to Thank have you, you on thanks mate yep good to see you thanks